Wang Yi Manufacturing, CIE and IGCSE Solutions, Accounting. Topic Final Accounts of Manufacturing Business, Paper Code 71102MJ10. Wang Yi Manufacturing, Income Statement, Balance Sheet and Manufacturing Account, Paper Code 7110, May June 2010 year. Wang Yi is a manufacturer. The following balances were extracted from his books on 31st January 2010. Inventories on 1st February 2009, that means the opening inventory of raw material, work in progress, finished goods are these. Purchases of raw material are given, purchases of finished goods are given, direct factory wages, that means direct labor, rent, factory management salaries, office salaries are given, revenue from sales, that will be used in income statement. Revenue returns, that means the sale return to be subtracted from revenue in income statement. Distribution cost, which is our expense to be taken in income statement. Sundry office expenses, which is an expense. Non-current liability, 8% loan, which will be taken in non-current liabilities. This is how the interest percentage on loan will be calculated. Finance cost, that means the loan interest paid, 2400 40,000 is the loan, 8% interest on it. That means the interest will be 3,200. Out of that 3,200, 2,400 is paid by the firm and remaining is still unpaid. Property, land and building cost is given. These are the non-current assets to be used in the balance sheet and their provisions are also given. Provision for doubtful debt which will be subtracted from trade receivables. Trade receivables are given, trade payables are current liability is given. Cash balance, cash or bank is the credit balance, that means it is the overdraft. Capital and drawings are given. Additional information is showing of the ending inventory of raw material, work in progress and finished goods. At 31st January, direct wages 1120 were accrued, that means they are still unpaid to be added in direct wages and they will be taken as a liability in balance sheet. Sundry office expenses are prepaid that means this will be subtracted from the sundry expenses and they will be taken to the balance sheet as prepaid because prepaids are current assets. Rent is to be apportioned on the basis of area occupied. Three fifths will be factory rent, two fifths will be office rent. Factory rent will be taken to factory overhead, office rent will be taken to income statement. Depreciation for plant machinery 20% using diminishing method and for office equipment depreciation is charged on straight line method. This plant and machinery de depreciation will be taken to factory overhead and office equipment depreciation will be taken to income statement. Office equipment purchased on 31st July 2006. This office equipment is purchased on this year. Additional equipment 6000 was purchased on 30th September 2009. No other change in non-current asset occurred in the year. Depreciation is calculated for the time assets are held in the business. This is an important point. We will be showing a detailed calculation for depreciation on office equipment in the upcoming slides. Provision for doubtful debt 4%, a detailed calculation for this will also be shown. We are required to prepare all three, manufacturing account, income statement and balance sheet for Wang Yi. Let's start. Manufacturing account has three important parts because direct expenses portion is not given in the question. Raw material consumed will be calculated by adding purchases of raw material in opening inventory of raw material. From this answer, we'll subtract clothing inventory of raw material and our final amount will be raw material consumed. We'll add direct wages in it. Direct wages had some amount of accrued that will be added and total wages will be taken here as an addition to the raw material consumed. Both raw material consumed and direct factory wages will give us the prime cost. Adding these two will give us the prime cost. Then we'll come to factory overhead portion. Those expenses which are not directly related to the office but are the indirect expenses of factory like factory manager salary, rent a portion to the factory and depreciation of factory, plant and machinery 
will be taken here. Calculations are all given. Rent is taken three fifth of the total because that was apportioned for the factory. The total of factory overhead is added in prime cost and this will give us cost of goods produced. Work in progress opening inventory is added in this and work in progress ending is subtracted from this. We can do this as a final amount taken here. And this is how total cost of production is calculated for Wang Yi manufacturing. Let's move to the next calculations which are important before proceeding with the income statement of Wang Yi. How to calculate doubtful debt provision? Whenever trade receivable balance is given, we apply the percentage of doubtful debt on it. Whatever is the amount of doubtful debt, we compare it with the balance given in the question for provision for doubtful debt. 4% was the rate, that means 1800 should be the amount of doubtful debt. Already in the question, previous balance given is 1550. If we look at the question slide, we'll see the provision for doubtful debt balance given in the question is 1550. Therefore, we will be subtracting this balance from this amount or you can say if the required balance is greater, we'll be increasing the doubtful debt. If required balance is lesser, we'll be decreasing the doubtful debt. Provision for doubtful debt is like the amount which is already kept aside. In this envelope, suppose 1550 is already the provision for doubtful debt. Now we need to increase this amount with $250 only. Therefore, this increase will be considered as an expense for the firm and will be taken to the income statement expenses portion by $250. Let's continue with the interest expense calculation. The loan amount was $40,000. Because it was a 8% loan, we have to calculate interest by multiplying it with 8%. That means $3,200 should be the amount of interest expense. When we look at the question, finance cost or loan interest paid, as given in the question, is $2,400. It means out of $3,200, $2,400 is already paid by the firm. So the interest which is still due or not paid yet is 800. So we'll be adding interest expense 800 in this amount by taking interest expense to the income statement. And we will be showing interest payable in balance sheet as 800 because this is a current liability on Wang Yi manufacturing. Hope this calculation is clear to you. Let's talk about the depreciation calculation which is very important for this question. All these details are given to us. When we look at the important points, the discussion says equipment 24,000 which is already in the business should be calculated depreciation by applying 20% on it. It means 4,800 is the depreciation of this equipment which is worth $24,000. Then we had purchased more equipment and that more equipment was purchased for 6000 only. We know that this equipment will also be charged 20% but because we had purchased it on 30th September 2009, starting the month from 30th September till 31st, July, 31st January will give us 4 months only. That means only four months depreciation is to be calculated for this equipment which was purchased on 30th September. That depreciation will be 400. Altogether total depreciation will be 5200 for equipment keeping in view this important point that depreciation is to be calculated for the time assets are held in the business. That is why we had calculated the depreciation for this only for four months and the total depreciation becomes 5200 an important part of this question which needs to be understood clearly let's talk about 31st january 2010 balances the format which we generally follow in income statement revenue minus return inwards will give you net revenue then we'll work on cost of sales for a manufacturing business, cost of sales should always have these items. 
opening inventory of finished goods plus cost of production plus purchases of finished goods all these three will be added closing inventory of finished goods will be subtracted and our final amount is cost of sales when we subtract cost of sales from this net revenue we'll get gross profit from this gross profit expenses are to be subtracted the rent which was allocated or apportioned to the office will come here the rent amount multiplied by 2 upon 5 will come here office salary distribution cost will come sundry office expenses the prepaids are to be subtracted then it will be taken here finance cost which we had just calculated in interest expense the interest paid plus 800 which is still due total 3200 will come depreciation of office equipment as shown in the previous slide total 5200 will come provision for doubtful debt as shown in the previous slide 250 will be recorded as an expense because we have to increase it total expenses are these when we subtract total expenses from gross profit we finally get our profit for the year the expenses total is shown in bracket because this is actually a subtraction in our uh, from our gross profit so the final profit for the year for Wang Yi manufacturing is $21,910 let's move to the last requirement of the question statement of financial position at 31st January 2010 the format which we follow assets is equal to capital and liabilities half portion is the assets in assets we'll first talk about the non-current assets we have three non-current assets in this question property land and building is not given with depreciation only its value is given therefore we'll be writing it in the middle column those non-current assets which are given along with their provision for depreciation their provision for depreciation will be subtracted in the first column and their net book values will be written here in the second column finally we have a list of these three non-current assets at their net book value in the second column when we'll add these three the final amount or the total non-current assets will be written in the third column because in this column we want total non-current assets and total current assets and their sum will be shown as total assets which will be half of our balance sheet after non-current assets let's talk about current assets we want inventory total to be written here as our first current asset for manufacturing business inventory is always in three types raw material ending work in progress ending finished goods ending all these three ending inventories will be added and their total will be taken in the second column then we have one more calculation to be shown here trade receivables are given and their provision for doubtful debt total provision for doubtful debt will be given we'll subtract them and we'll take the net receivables here our first current asset our second current asset then prepaid expenses we had seen sundry expenses were prepaid prepaid expenses are the current asset they will also come here these three current assets are the total assets total current assets which we need to take the sum of these three will be written here total non-current asset and total current asset will give you the total assets sum up these two amounts and our half of the balance sheet is done let's talk about the second main important part of balance sheet that is the capital and liabilities first we'll work on the capital portion capital working could be done either in this column or in this column and its final amount will be written here because total capital and total liabilities will be shown as an addition and it will equalize to total assets capital calculation is always done in this way capital given in the question plus net profit which we had calculated in our income statement these two will be added amount is this less drawings we will subtract the drawings from this amount and the final answer will be written in the third column because it should be added with total liabilities let's talk about the liabilities portion now liabilities portion has two parts non-current liabilities we have one loan of 40,000 in non-current liability only one non-current liability we have let's look at the current liabilities list 
we have accrued expenses that means the payables 800 was the interest payable 1120 was the accrued expense both will be added and this is our second liability current liability then we have loan payable given in the question which is a short term loan we have trade payables these three are the current liabilities let's sum up them and we'll write total current liabilities here long term or non current liabilities plus current liability the total of liabilities will be taken here capital final amount and the total liabilities we'll sum these two amounts and we'll get the equal amount of total capital and liabilities which is equal to the total assets for a balance sheet total assets are always equal to total liabilities and capital so this is the presentation style for the Wang Yi manufacturing statement of financial position like share subscribe for most important topics in upcoming days commerce lecture online